Hi everyone, this is Jack from Quixel. We've been working on a set of environments that aim to showcase multiple use case, tips and tricks, and perspectives around using Megascans and Unreal Engine. This was actually my first project with Megascans and photogrammetry in general, so I've used it as an opportunity to learn more about that and see how much artistic control I could maintain throughout the production process. In this video, I'll show you how that went with the creation process of this abandoned alleyway and how powerful the Megascans and Unreal Engine combo can be for any environment artist. With that out of the way, let's get started. First, I collected a bunch of reference images to get some ideas on what the structure was going to look like and what small details might be worth adding. With a set of references opened on one screen and Autodesk Maya on the other, I started working on my block out to establish the primary shapes of the scene. I saw this environment as a great opportunity to dive deep into Unreal's material editor and create really compelling materials, but also to learn more about the material layering in general. So the walls occupied most of the space on the screen and from there I knew I had to pull off a really good looking wall. Once the block out was done, I imported it into Unreal and started placing a few cameras around what I wanted to be my hero shots. I also added a very crude lighting pass to get a better sense of how different parts of the scene would be lit. For the lighting, I took inspiration primarily from Blade Runner, the Batman Arkham games, and plenty of real world references. Generally speaking, if you're struggling to find the right angle at this stage, I highly recommend that you go back to your block out and references to tweak the primary shapes of your environment. Because if the primary shapes aren't interesting enough, then details will only make things worse from there. So with the scenes block out, camera angles, and lighting done, I went off to bridge and exported a few surfaces that I'd be using on my brick wall. In this case, I needed a generic brick wall and a few plaster surfaces with different levels of wear. I exported them to Unreal, then used them on this custom material. This material was created specifically for this project and leverages multiple features like parallax occlusion or tessellation-based displacement and vertex painting, along with parameters to smooth or harden the surface transitions, roughness control, and so on. You can find a link to download the material in the description below, and I'll cover it more extensively in an upcoming tutorial as well. As you can see, the wall is already showing a lot of promise with a very basic vertex painting pass, and I can go back to my material instance parameters and tweak the blend settings, change the active vertex color to paint another layer of plaster, and so on. This might be the most enjoyable part of the environment creation process, and having textures that you know will fit really well into your composition makes it even faster. Now vertex painting to layer materials is great and all, but the real world is more than just a bunch of textures slapped together. Every wall out there has a history with some broken parts, leakages from rain over the years, or underneath objects that are on the wall. To simulate that, what I did was leverage the decals in the Megascans library, which are essentially just surfaces with an opacity mask. All you need to do is open Bridge, tell it what you want, like concrete decals in this case, and you'll have everything you need. I've already downloaded and imported a few of them in Unreal, but the process is the same as usual. You select what you want to export to Unreal, then hit Export, and you're done. Now I'll start placing my decals all over the wall to give it more life where it needs. I'm mostly using broken concrete, leakages, and cracked decals for this, but it adds an invaluable layer of realism to the walls without looking out of place. Let's zoom out a bit and see how this looks so far. There's still a lot of assets, surfaces, and decals to add all over the scene, but the next thing I'm going to show you is something more specific. You've probably noticed a bunch of pipes all over the place during the introduction, and those pipes are just cylindrical objects but with a twist. I duplicated the faces where I wanted to have some leaks, adjusted their UVs for better planar projection, and from there sent them to UE4 and applied a few materials on them. The workflow I just described is called trim sheets, and is used in probably every video game out there nowadays. 
I also pushed the overlay meshes vertices along their normals just enough to avoid some z-fighting issues, which happens when you have two meshes overlapping each other. As you can see, the pipes look fairly simple, but once you add decals to the leaks, they really start to stand out more in the scene. Coupled with a roughness tweak to make them wetter, and you have some great looking assets in no time. I'll just skip over where I had the pipes already set up, but this should give you a good idea of the workflow I used in this environment. From there on, I just applied the same workflow to the entirety of the scene. The floor, for instance, used the same workflow as the walls, and I vertex painted the water puddles in there to give more depth to my scene by playing with reflections. Next, I imported a bunch of assets from Bridge, then started placing them around here and there. Before I knew it, the scene was already starting to show its final form. Add to that a couple of custom assets like the escape ladder on the top right, and your larger details are now all in place. Last but not least, I fired up the foliage tool in Unreal, which despite its name, is great for scattering plants, debris, leaves, and all sorts of other small assets. This is the final detail pass and truly makes your environment shine. So always take your time when doing it, but also make sure that you don't overdo it. All right, that should be it. As you can see, the environment went through a bunch of detailing passes before I got to its final stage. And I've also added a lot of other details like electrical boxes and cables, garbage bags, and so on. When looking at a scene like this, it can be compelling to think that you're just using pre-made assets and moving them around. And you're technically doing just that. But a scene is so much more than just assets. It's the lighting, composition, atmosphere, and dynamic between objects. A workflow like this is an opportunity to truly transcend the small details like UVing the 58th asset in your scene, and instead truly focusing on what makes you an artist that stands out from the crowd. I hope you enjoyed this environment as much as I did while working on it. And please tune in on Friday the 6th of September at 7pm CET for another extended breakdown on this scene, where I'll answer your questions. Thank you so much for watching, and I'll see you next week.